Now to tonight's special report. It's been a year since China's ban on foreign waste sent shockwaves through our recycling industry. It suddenly had 1.2 million tonnes of waste to find a new home for. That sounds like a massive figure, but it's a drop in the ocean compared to the 111 million tonnes that previously went to China from all over the world. So far, that's gone to countries like Thailand, where foreign waste imports have left 400 per cent, and Malaysia up more than 200 per cent. China's old problem has become their new one, and now they've announced similar bans. It means a solution right here at home is more urgent than ever. As finance correspondent Philip Lasker explains, some businesses are trying, but they say they need government help to deal with the crisis. This is Australia's circular economy in action. Paper from your yellow bins transformed into the daily newspaper. Plastic packaging made into gardening items like pots for plants. An infrastructure like roads, built using recycled glass and soft plastics, delivering superior performance. But this road costs double what it would normally, and Canberra's local government won't pay extra. So construction company Downer is taking a hit. If we get scale and it becomes our norm, these types of products will actually outperform from a cost perspective. But the scale isn't there because the necessary demand hasn't materialised. The waste sector blames the federal government, accusing it of neglect. Federally, government's done nothing. We've had meetings, we've had more meetings, and then we've had more talk, and we've had no action. Sorting, processing and manufacturing are important parts of the circular economy. This materials recovery facility in northern Adelaide processes waste from yellow bins for local councils. So this is our first real chance to get at the plastics. Its CEO Adam Faulkner has lofty goals despite the current crisis. We're going to use 100% of what our residents put in that yellow top bin on Australian shores by 2020. Just about everything here will be used to make Australian products. And to duplicate that across the country, you need a nationally coordinated plan. Because if you're talking about a circular economy, state boundaries become irrelevant. After sorting comes processing. The paper from the materials recovery facility is sent to New South Wales, where it's turned into newsprint. But the plastic travels just a few kilometres. This South Australian plant has just switched on after a $20 million investment from private investors and the state government. It's cutting edge in the world, so it's certainly cutting edge in Adelaide. It will do uh, what few others can do, either here or internationally. A collection of machines separate the material into different types of plastic. They wash it and pelletise it, fit to make plastic containers for anything other than food. Manufacturing follows processing. RPA's biggest customer is Victorian-based Garden City Plastics, a company that makes nursery equipment. The flower pots are made from 100% recycled plastic and are 100% recyclable. RPA's challenge is attracting the big consumer goods companies that rely on packaging to sell their products like shampoos and detergents. The biggest thing we're looking for is uh, for someone in the brands to adopt us. With a 1.2 million tonne surplus of material stockpiling in Australia and foreigners increasingly reluctant to take our waste, the industry says there's only one solution. The government needs to take action to change the market, to put the policy levers in place to make that demand. And one obvious thing as such a major procurer itself is to actually start buying recycled. In a statement, Environment Minister Melissa Price said, the government is preparing a national action plan and supporting projects that divert waste from landfill. The government also outlined plans in the budget to spend $100 million on emerging and long-term environmental issues, including waste. The opposition will establish a $60 million national recycling fund. As the industry waits, Adam Faulkner sees another major challenge. We have a big part of our community that want to do the right thing with their yellow top bin, 
but there is unfortunately a segment that either don't want to know or don't understand what to put in that yellow bin. We also need community to actually take the purchasing power and make decisions that help the industry. So they do need a label that says this is recycled content and they need to actually preference those purchases. Because if the market fails, recyclables will end up in landfill. Philip Lasker, ABC News.